children about your faithfulness. Not only does he predict his peril, and he looks at the present as permanent, and he projects his pain on God, and he makes premature promises. But verse 19 reminds us when he says, Parents tell their children about your faithfulness, that we have to be aware to not minimize the parental picture. And that is, as Jeanette says, that our kids are watching us, right. not just in our success, but also in our struggle that as a parent, we create a profile for them. We create a standard for them to follow. As a parent, it's not just what we say, it's not just what we teach, it's not just how we guide, but it is when they hear us yeah. go through. Uh -huh. Verse 20 says, the Lord will save me, and we will sing with string instruments. All the days of, the li uh, of our lives in the temple of the Lord. And so he moves to this point where he is punctuating and pulsating with praise. Mm -hmm. It's at this point. Because God has delivered him. Yeah. Because he's made it out of his woe and moves to his worship. Mm -hmm. He's made it out of woe is me and begins to worship and so he says, the Lord will save me and we will sing with string instruments yeah. all the days of our lives in the temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So here he's made a promise. He says, I will walk humbly mm -hmm. before God all my years. Yeah. And he says, and I'll sing all my days. Yeah. He says, I walk humbly all my years. That's our walk. And then I'll sing all our days. That's my worship. Yeah. He says, God, because you got me through this, yeah. mm -hmm. you won't have to worry about my walk right. or my worship from here. Can I ask one more time? Go ahead, man. But have you ever messed up mm -hmm. a good thing? Yeah. yeah. 21 says, Isaiah said, prepare a poultice of figs and apply it to the boil and he will recover. And then he recovered. And chapter 39, I'm almost done. Chapter 39 says, at the time Marduk, Balaam, son of Baladad, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because he had heard of his illness and recovering, Hezekiah received envoys gladly and showed them what was in his storehouses. The silver, the gold, the spices, the fine olive oil, his entire armory, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Mm. Then, Hezekiah, then Isaiah the prophet went to Hezekiah and asked, what did those men say? And where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied. They came to, they came to me from Babylon. The prophet asked, what did they see in your palace? Hezekiah responded, they saw everything in my palace, Hezekiah said. There is nothing among my, pre my treasures yeah. I did not show them. Mm -hmm. Have you ever messed up a good thing? <laughs> yeah. 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 Face against the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. God, mm -hmm. please remember me. Mm -hmm. God says, okay, I'm going to give you 15 years. He says, I almost died and you was after me and you threatened me and my life was over and everything. And he says all of this and God allows that to happen. And then after he complains and say, God, I mean, this was it. And then you threatened me. You were on me. And so God let that happen. And then he says, but I realize you've spoken to me and I will walk on me. Yeah, yeah. How long? Oh. All my years. Yeah, that's what he 
And by the next time, the chapter changes from 38 to 39. It says that he has now been ill and recovered. Yeah. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it says that the king sent some people to him yeah. because they heard of his illness and his recovery. Mm. The reason that they came is because the word was out. The testimony had gone out. People had been won over by hearing of his illness and recovery. And when they got there, guess what? Rather than focusing on God's strength in his sickness, instead of, let me say it again, let me slow down. Rather than focusing on God's strength and recovering from his sickness, what he wanted them to see was his status and his stuff. <laughs> That's good. He said, I walk humbly uh -huh. all my years. Yeah. And as soon as God restored him uh -huh. and folk came based on the testimony uh -huh. of his illness and recovery, uh -huh. he said, come see everything. Yeah. <laughs> Watch. He says, look at everything I got. Yeah. He says, look at my storehouses. Mm. Come see my silver. Yeah. Come see my gold. Come see my spices. Come see my olive oil. Come see my armory, my weapons. Come see everything among my treasures. They came because of his testimony. Right. They came because of his recovery. Oh. They came because of what God had done. Yeah. And here is where Hezekiah messes it all up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've gone from humility to arrogance oh. that fast. Yeah. We've gone from God, I'll never do anything else wrong to messing up that fast. Yeah. We've gone from all about God to all about me yeah. that fast. Yeah. Has God ever stepped in yeah, yeah, and yeah. trusted mm. That he would get us out of something, mm -hmm. and as soon as he got us out of something, we messed up. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. As soon as we were beyond the pain, mm -hmm. beyond the anguish, oh, beyond yeah. the hurt, mm -hmm. beyond being scared and fearful, beyond how is this going to turn out. Wow. And as soon as God got us back on our feet, mm -hmm. put money back in our pockets, oh, right. mm -hmm. put us back in an either import or with income, we messed yeah. up in the next chapter. God. Look, look. He says, hey, yeah, hey, hey. Y'all heard about me? Come see my status now. Hezekiah, I remember when you were broke down. Come see my status now. I remember when you were hopeless. Come see my status now. I remember when you were in despair. Come see my status mm. And my stuff. Mm. How do we mess up? It's when we move from praise yeah. mm. to a platform for our pride. Yeah. Oh my God. Says, come see our stuff. How do we mess up when we move from a platform for our pride? Come see everything. Mm. I'm almost there. To giving people a palace pass. Mm. Mm. You know how it is. There are certain artists mm. where you get a backstage pass if you really somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get a VIP. Everybody, some people in the nosebleed section, yeah. and some people in the lower section, and some people are in the boxes, yeah. and some people on the floor, and some people in the orchestra. But if you really somebody, you get a yeah. backstage pass, yeah. and what Hezekiah did is passed out palace passes to people that he never should have. Mm. Uh, uh, that went over your head. No. Do you know that there are some folk? Yeah, say that. You can't give a palace pass. Yeah, to? say that. There are some oh. folk That's good. you can't invite in every area of your life. Yeah. There are some folk you can't tell. Everything. Yeah. There are some 
helpful, uh -huh. you can't show yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Can I blackenize this for just a moment? <laughs> Can I blackenize it? Because I remember being in a job situation uh -huh. where I was in a corporate structure mm. and I was doing well, y'all. Mm -hmm. I was in a corporate structure with my light white folk <laughs> and I was the good Negro. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. I was the smart yeah. Negro. I, know what you mean. I yeah. was the one coming up with the new ideas. Yeah, preach. I was the one turning, expanding the corporate structure. Uh -huh, preach. I was the one recruiting yeah. folk. I was the one hitting the numbers. Uh -huh. And you know what? What? <laughs> Status. Uh <-huh. laughs> and you know what? Uh -huh. Stuff. Uh -huh. And can I go and give you a secret? We're just having a conversation between us. Yeah. They were open. As long as they thought I was struggling. Yeah, say that. That's good. Yeah. They were okay as yeah. long as they felt like I was sacrificing. Yeah. 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 They were okay as long as they felt like I needed them yeah. more than they needed me. That's good. Yeah. That's good. But God blessed in some other areas yeah. where I didn't need them the same yeah. and I had back up yeah. income. Yeah. And when they realized I wasn't sacrificing, and when they realized I was struggling, yeah. and when they realized I was coming to work because I wanted to, yeah, but I didn't that. have to, everything changed. Yeah. Oh, I thought, yeah, that's good. Bob and Cindy were my friends. <laughs> you can't show them yeah. everything. Uh -huh. I thought Bob and Cindy uh -huh. were my encouragement. You yeah. can't show them. Yeah. Everything. Uh -huh. I thought everything was fine. You can't yeah. show them. You're right. Everything. That's good. How many That's times good. Yeah. have we given a palace mm -hmm. pass? Yeah. You don't have to drive the best car to work. Mm, That's good. <laughs> yeah. Palace pass. If you got a, if you got a hoop there that you kept for the grandkid or whatever, sometimes there are some places. Where it's better to show up in it mm -hmm. than what you really have. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You don't have to wear all your jewelry. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to show up in red bottoms to every event. You have to know yeah. when to and when not to yes, use yes. your palace pass. Yeah, say that. He messed up by yeah. showing them everything. Notice what the prophet says. That's a good word. The prophet asked in verse 4, What? did they see yeah. in your palace? Yeah. They saw everything. <laughs> in my palace, Hezekiah, there is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord Almighty. When God first spoke in chapter 38, God says you will surely die. When God spoke a second time in chapter 38, he said, go back and tell him he's going to live and I'm going to add some years mm -hmm. and I'm going to deliver him and I'm going to defend. Mm -hmm. Work that. Here's where God speaks again. God says, now this time you will surely, this time will surely come when everything in your palace and all your predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. No, it says everything that you have and everything not, not that you earned or acquired but inherited. Not everything just that you worked for, but those who worked for before you. He says everything that your predecessors, the one that who, who worked even before now, he says, all of it will be gone. Wow. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, will be taken away. Mm. Mm -hmm. In one moment, he messed up so bad mm. that the Lord says, Hezekiah, not just your stuff, mm. yeah. But your father's stuff, your grandfather's stuff, 
your great grandfather's stuff, their stuff is going to be taken away. Hezekiah, not just your stuff, but your descendant stuff, your children and your grandchildren stuff can be taken away. Lean in and I'm almost done. Do you know it's not always stuff? Sometimes it's name. It's not always stuff. Sometimes it's name. It's reputation. You can make a decision in a moment where he says, Hezekiah, I mean, Carl, you can make a decision where it turns a name. It's not just your name, but your father's name, your grandfather's name, your great-grandfather's name, your children's name, your grandchildren's name. It's messed up because of a decision you made. He said, why would you show them everything? Why would you make public that which is private? Why would you show them everything? Close the Bible. I got to open it just one more time for the last verse. Notice verse 8 says, The word of the Lord you have spoken is good. Hezekiah replied, Let, let me slow down. This, this, this is so central. It blows my mind. Isaiah says to him, You have messed up so bad by showing him everything. That you have ruined it for those who came before you, for you, and for those who come after yeah. you. All of them. He says, even your sons will be eunuchs in the palace of Babylon. Verse 8 says, the word of the Lord you have spoken is good. Hezekiah replied, for he thought there will be peace and security in my lifetime. How did he mess up? He didn't count what you, the price that had to be paid for what he thought would be peace. Oh, I, I, I just don't, I just don't get it. I, I just want to slap Hezekiah across the head. I just want to shake him and say, what? Did you hear what the prophet just said? And he said, okay, so that's good, right? <laughs> he said, that's good because it says he thought, well, as a result of this, I will have peace and security. Mm. Can I tell you how you mess up a good thing? When you forget the God mm. yeah, yeah. who added the years. Yeah. yeah. You forget the God who brought you back. You forget the God who held you all this time. You forget the God who was faithful to you. And you mean you're going to start to believe that the enemy are the ones who are going to provide you peace and security. Can I just end by just giving you just a little insider information? We believe that Satan somehow is all-knowing, omniscient, all-present, um, uh, omnipresent, and all-powerful, omnipotent, and we believe the same thing about him that we believe about God. We believe somehow that Satan has equal power, role, and reign as God can I help you as I 